Now, uh, let's talk about a couple of other things. On a Sunday night, we get the chance to sit back and sort of look at things that aren't necessarily sort of the biggest news of the day, but they are things that are really changing the way that we live. And I want to talk about this double standard messaging that's sometimes a little hard to decode, James, which is, of course, smoking, bad, um, put up the taxes as hard as you possibly can, soft drinks, bad, of course, we should introduce new taxes on sugar, but completely OK if you walk around with drugs. Uh, now, we know, of course, that uh, there's the decriminalisation that's taking place uh, about possession in uh, the full decriminalisation in the ACT. That came to effect this weekend. And there's the fiddling of things which are happening in Queensland and in New South Wales as well about sort of multiple strikes and does anyone honestly think they're going to end up, uh, you know, getting caught that many times that they end up in getting the third strike? But, James, again, in this culture that, on the one hand, wants to be an absolute nanny state about what you can and can't put in your body, but on the other side will turn around and say, the stuff that's made by some weirdo, um, you know, in a meth lab, that's completely OK. Um, wouldn't we just be better to say no to both rather than let's just find a way not to go after the end user? Yeah, Paul, the public have known people in Canberra have been smoking something a bit sinister for many <laughs> decades now with the, 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 the type of policy that's been coming out of there. But it is just unbelievable. Look, I can't get over the fact that you cop a, a higher price or a higher fine for, for speeding 13 kilometres over uh, through that main drag of uh, Canberra there, which is signposted as 40. I think everyone's almost got a speeding ticket through there, which is over 300 bucks. And yet they're dishing out $100 fines for serious drugs. We're talking methamphetamines. We're talking cocaine. You know, here in Queensland, they're banning stonemasons because they've got a 10% makeup of silica in their bench tops. And yet here they are saying, hey, go and smoke all this this illegal mm. substance and, and the worst case you get to 100 buck fine. It's yeah. insane. I, I just don't understand where the bureaucrats are at. It's a good point, isn't it, uh, Keith, where uh, if you're off your face on Northbourne Avenue, it's 100 bucks. If you go, uh, you know, 13 k's over, it's 300 bucks. It's a very good point. But again, this message in Queensland, right, and particularly regional Queensland, where uh, we know that, of course, much of the youth crime is connected to needing to get the money to buy the drugs. So if the government's going to turn around and say, for want of a better term, it's OK to take the drugs, but it's not OK to commit the crime to pay for the drugs. They're sending a strange message, aren't they? Oh, I'm pretty cynical on this one in Queensland, Paul. And I think it's all about getting the numbers down for how many convictions and uh, arrests you've had as you come into the election next October. Yep. But in Canberra, mate, I did a little bit of research. If you're out on your bicycle on one of those cultured paths to get your espresso in the morning, uh, and you're, you're dragging around your heroin and your MDMA and whatever else it might be. Yep, the fine's 100 bucks, <laughs> but don't get caught without a bell on your bicycle because it's even more. It's $121 <laughs> and don't have oh. no helmet. I mean, I survived without a helmet from 70, 1975 to 86. Yeah. But you can have enough heroin to kill a horse uh, <laughs> as long as you, you've got a bell on your bike. Yeah, again, I mean, you know, my favourite example about all of this, Linda, and I understand the harm minimisation conversation that I'm predicting you may well uh, make in a, a moment or two, which is that in the uh, inject, drug injecting centres that are in Sydney, you can shoot up heroin, but you can't smoke a cigarette. Well, look, can I just say I look forward to seeing Keith Pitt on a bike in Canberra. I'll ride along next to him up to Parliament House next time we're both there together with our bills compliant. I usually walk. Uh, <laughs> Well, we can ride, Keith. It'll be great fun. Uh, yeah, Do one of those tandem bikes around Lake Burley Griffin. Absolutely. I'm so up for it. We've got this You'll incredibly successful uh, injecting centre in Sydney where there has, since it has opened, not been a single death, right? That is such a significant oh, public policy. Well, <laughs> I think we should celebrate that people are alive. I think that is a policy worthy of celebration. And it has been because... Uh, legislators, Bob Carr included, opened it, taking the view that addiction was a health policy issue. And I don't mind that and that facility exists, but when the state turns around and says that the greater crime is bicycle helmets and speed, well, I don't think that's what they're drugs. saying. What they're saying <laughs> is that fining people, putting them in jail for an issue that is uh, a health issue doesn't create an outcome where people live, people get treatment, people recover, people commit less crime. So we should focus in, here it? on the outcome, and that is helping people to recover from the grips of a terrible addiction right. rather than finding them and incentivising more crime.